Hi, Pete Rogers of Shooting Sports Magazine, welcome to Gunmark TV and welcome to part two of the Sauer S400. In the first one we saw the standard classic in the synthetic stock in a, what I would call a normal hunting format. Um, I mentioned that there's other stock options. This is the thumbhole stock, what they call the XT version, and this is the XTC, as in carbon fibre. Probably gun weighs just over five pounds, and it's really light and handy, and I do like the thumbhole stock uh, very, very much. I'm not such a fan of carbon fibre, but I can see the attraction because you've got a lightweight rifle, for whatever reasons, it certainly gives it to you. But now we need to look more at the nuts and bolts of the rifle. Basically, the butts come off of all the sours, uh, and using this, their, their, um, their multi key, you undo this Allen key here, three or four turns, the whole butt section comes off, so it's out of the way. But the multi key is really nice because it does everything on the gun. It lives in the fore end, as you've seen on the first one. And to take the fore end out, you put the key in, give it a turn like that comes straight off. Inside there's a little locking system. And as I said before, the Sauer 202 and the 404 are both switch barrel guns, which is again a very easy to accomplish again with the key. Open the bolt and you've got three captive screws here. These don't need to come all the way out, they just need to be undone. What they do, it's, it's called a split clamp receiver. The receiver is actually split at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a slot, and basically when the barrel is in, you tighten the screws up and it, the barrel actually, the, the receiver clamps around the barrel and holds it in situ, and also obviously the fact is that when the bolt's shut, it engages with the barrel, so there's no chance of the barrel going anywhere but staying where it is. So basically, slap these off, just to, just to get rid of the pinch, Undo the front one, which is a lock, and it comes down like that, that lever there, and the barrel whips out, simple as that. There's a witness key in there as it goes in, so the barrel aligns, you put it in, and it locks in like that. But before you shut it up, you then close the bolt, so the bolt engages and actually grips the barrel where it needs to be. Then you just lift this back up and wind down the screws, just nip them up tight first of all, so that they're, they're pulling evenly, just to get the first little bit of pressure. Then when that's done, you just go in sequence and give them a good tighten. Um, Sauer say that the gun does return to zero uh, on a barrel change. Um, oddly enough, the first one we did, the, the uh, classic, didn't. It was shooting about three inches high and had to readjust. Whereas this one, when I, I took the barrel and put it back in, it did go back to point of aim. So maybe I was doing something wrong, I don't know. Perhaps I didn't tension up enough, but um, this bears out the claim it does to go back to zero. But with any switch barrel rifle, and this is my advice, is that if you're changing barrels, then you should, you owe it to yourself and the game just to check zero because things do happen. So now we're there. Right, so the bolt comes out, that plunger there pushes up, and the bolt comes out. And like I said before, where if Sarah of, of um, should we say, cherry picked off blazer, for the bolt change, um, in the old 202, the bolt was solid. Same sort of setup, but it's just one piece bolt. So if you were, if you were shooting or choosing calibers within the group, so like 308, you could go 308, 22, 250, 30 odd six, 243, anything with that head is not a problem. But if you needed, say you went to a, a um, 300 wind mag, for example, which is a completely different head size, you'd have to buy a whole bolt from Sauer, not this. So what they've done, they've, they've done the Mauser route, which is, which is the cleverest and simplest system. Mauser does it on the decocker, but here you just pull this catch down and the bolt head comes straight off. And in fact, looking at the inside of it, it's almost a dead copy of the Mauser, but why not? It's all part of the same group. So if you want to switch to 223, then simple as that. Rebarrel, take the bolt head off, slip a 223 bolt, bolt head on. So it's just pull down this catch here, engage it, push up, and you're there. The other thing on it, which 
It's a little bit different, and I'm not sure if it's really necessary, but that's just my opinion. I'll stand up for this. Is the trigger. It's a weight adjustable. Can you see here, you've got one, two, three, and four in Roman numerals, and each one is a weight. And I do apologise, but I haven't got the exact weights, but I think they're about a pound, a pound apart, or two, about a pound apart. So one is quite light. You click around to two, I'm oh, sorry. As you can see, the little white pointer. That's two. That's three, and obviously four is over there. Um, in testing, I found there's very little difference between one and two. Um, it's it's more more of a sort of a feel rather than an actual physical thing. Three, you feel a slight increase in weight, but it's quite slight. And four, again, a slight increase. I've been basically. Um, I found that three suits me very well, and I don't think I'll ever take it off three for anything. It gives a nice pull, but it's individual. If you want to do it, you can do it. It's entirely up to you. But as I said, you just put it in, turn it to, to engages, and that's it. So that is that. That's a rifle. Nice is how easy it is to sort of, to do everything to it. Basically, four inch slides on, locks in place. Rotate the latch. That's locked in solid. The butt screws on. The bolt just slides in, like so. And the mag goes in. Um, I think it's a, a clever system. So this is the the the, the XTC has a fluted barrel, uh, and it's threaded 15 by one as standard, which is quite nice comes with QD sling swivels should you desire them with the multi key once you've used it pop into the fore end as I said with the uh, Proflex bipod that we looked at the Spartan 300 which is the Sour Proflex um, you buy an adapter with a little tiny block at the front which has a socket for the magnetic connection but in some ways you know nothing on the 202 um, I think honestly this is a marginally better rifle. The design is more modern, and you know. And, and the, the only thing I don't like is really the fact that you no longer have an option on scope mounts. You've got to buy the sour mount. Uh, Blars will do it. Mouths will do it. So you, you're probably paying a thick and a four hundred quid for a mount. But that's just my observation. Um, apart from that, I've got to say, I'm a little bit impressed. The only thing is that with the XDC, because it's carbon fibre, you will be paying a, a deal more for the rifle. Uh, but that's just carbon fiber, you can't help it. But one more thing before we go is sour do this really sweet carry case. Um, I've got a carry case in my Mauser, and it's, it's good, but it's quite big. But the advantage of the fact you can take the, the butt off the rifle, you get a much more compact case. As you can see, I have the butt in there, space for a scope, space for a mag, and then in the top section, you have the bolt and the uh, barrel action and forend in what is a really compact little case. I mean, I'm, I use my MO3 case in Europe quite a lot. It's a double rifle case, so you can put two barrels in it, but it is big and heavy. Uh, but this, this is super luggage. Um, and I think Sarah have done well just, just to make a case of this rifle on its own, but yeah. That's the 404 in its various forms. Uh, we'll be seeing a lot more of the rifle, but overall, Sarah done a good job.